Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today, we're gonna to be going over how to create a case report within Salesforce. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So I'm currently on the homepage of Salesforce. From here, we're gonna go over to reports. And then you can see here comes a list of my most recent reports. I'm gonna click on new report that's kind of up here in the middle, top right, and click new report. And then, so over here, well, let's back up a minute. These are going to be report types. So this just specifies the group of data that you're going to be starting out with for your report within Salesforce. So from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to customer support reports. Um, and in this little file of report types, I'm gonna go choose cases. But before we go into that specific report type, I do wanna mention that there are other uh, report types that have other things within it, such as cases with assets, cases with solutions, cases with articles. You might actually want to choose these before you jump into a case report. It all just depends on what uh, question you're trying to answer with creating this specific report. But just for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm gonna go into cases, click start report, and that will bring us to view the report. A couple things before we uh, jump in and I kind of show you all the different bells and whistles of creating this specific report. You'll want to appear in the kind of top right. Uh, there's this update preview automatically toggle on and toggle off. It is extremely useful to you to have this toggled on. So then you don't have to save and run every time that you make a change. This will automatically update what you're seeing right now within the report. Uh, other things that you'll want to do is you'll want to go over to the filters. Currently, it's showing me all cases within my Salesforce org and open date of all time and units are in hours. So what this is going to do over here, these filters are going to help you narrow down or open up what data you see from that initial group of data. Now, that sounds kind of confusing, but we could change the open date to this last quarter um, current fiscal year, next fiscal year, uh, fiscal quarters, all these different things. So whatever time range you want to show this off of, then go ahead and select that. I'm gonna just leave it how it is. You can also show a specific subset of cases. So currently it's showing me um, all cases. I can narrow it down by my cases or my team's cases. Any cues that we had, I could narrow it down to those. So I would select that and then hit apply. I'm gonna leave it how it is. And then of course we have it in hours. I think that cases having the units as hours is really, really helpful. So then any time-based escalations can be shown within this report. All right, so there, that's kind of a quick overview. There's other things that you can do within your filters. You can add it pretty much based on most uh, fields that you have on this thing. So you could do status, uh, you could show only ones that are new, you could show working or closed or escalated. Let's go ahead and see if they have any in escalated. We have none in escalated. And let's see if we have any in new and escalated. All right, we've got a couple in new, so we can see that as well. If you wanted to go ahead and lock this, so anyone who is coming into your report as not yourself, uh, you could lock this and they wouldn't be able to change this filter to show something else, maybe something that's better or just mess with it in general. So that can be really important if you have multiple people looking at your report. I am going to actually get rid of this filter so then we have more data to work off of. Um, other things that you can do, we can go over and select any new fields that we want to add. Maybe we want to add type. I am going to drag it over here. All right, now we can see the type. We could also put the case number as well over here. If you double click, it does the same thing and it'll add it to the very left of it. And yeah, you can do anything. Um, most record types have other objects or other groups of data that you can pull in data from. So specifically for the cases, you can bring in most data from the account that is associated with the case. So what that means is let's say I had um, a case for United Oil and Gas Corp, uh, and it was associated with that account, then I would be able to bring in some pertinent information that is specified on the report type in the back end and be able to pull things off of 
the account record that was associated. So I could pull in their uh, address or their billing address or where we would need to contact that person from the account. So that's a little bit on that. Let's go ahead. I'm going to exit out of fields here. Go to outline. We can do some really awesome things. One thing I like to do is I like to group things. Um, let's go ahead and group it by type and I'll show you what that kind of does. That will group together. Uh, so type is a pick list field. Uh, what pick list fields do is you're able to choose one out of many different options. And this one is currently type. So we have uh, mechanical issues, electrical issues, electronic issues, structural issues. So what we could do is we could group those by uh, the type. So I currently have mechanical, electrical, electronic, structural, all grouped into their own thing. And regardless of other than just, it's nice to know how many are in each section. This can also help you understand from a business standpoint of what issues are most common and what should we report back to higher management that needs to be fixed with the product or that we can do a better job of creating users training on it or all different types of use cases. So that is really, really helpful. And then you can do other things. Um, if you have like a number field, so on opportunities, oftentimes you can summarize by the amount. Here, we don't really have too much unless there's like a lost revenue number, but we can summarize or average out the average age of each case. And you can add subtotals if you have those, those groupings over there. Let's go ahead and hit save and run. I'm gonna just leave this as a new cases report. And then you can select a folder. Currently it's in my private reports. So only I have access to these private reports um, and no one else can view it unless they are looking over my shoulder. All right, I'm gonna hit save and we have created a new cases report. Other things that you can do here, you can refresh it. Uh, you can also refresh your browser that does the same thing. You can add a chart, um, but only if you have a, a grouping because that's how the system knows how to visualize each different piece. Right here, I'm gonna go to chart properties. I like the donut chart just because it visually shows me in a better format. Just how my brain works. There are other ways that you can do this. Um, currently, I can't do a stacked bar or a stacked column chart, but I can do all these other fun charts to visualize. Other things that you can do, you can edit, so that'll take you back to the editor. You can edit it in classic. You can save as, which will kind of duplicate the report as a workaround for duplicating the report. You can save it, subscribe to it, so it'll be pushed to your email uh, every however many days you specify. You can export it, delete it, and add it to a dashboard. But that is pretty much it and all you need to know for creating a cases report within Salesforce. I hope that you found this video useful. Um, I'm also using a new microphone, so if you like it, be sure to let me know down in the comments if you if this sounds better than my normal tutorials. Yeah, check out the courses down below if you are interested in getting Salesforce certified. And you can find me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.